So next up we're going to look at solubility curves and solubility curves are basically just um, a, a line or curve that shows the relationship between uh, the temperature of a solution or a solvent and the amount of uh, solute that can dissolve into it. So the relationship between temperature and solubility. Here temperature would be considered to be our independent variable because it's what you can control and adjust and then the solubility of the substance uh, or the solute would be considered your dependent your dependent variable because it's what's changing as a result. So as you adjust the temperature of the water, for example, you can dissolve more or less of a given solute into it based on that temperature change. So that's what solubility curves show. The one that you see here is the same one that I've given you a copy of or will soon give you a copy of to work with in class if you don't have it already. Um, and it's the one I'll refer to that go with the problems that you'll be working on to practice solubility curves and can understand how they work and what they're good for. Uh, over the next day or two in class as well. So a solubility curve itself, the lines that you see on the sheet in front of you or the one on the screen, uh, this one's got, I don't know, 10 or 12 different lines on it or different curves on it. Each of those lines represents the maximum amount of solute that can be dissolved at a given temperature. So you see across the bottom that as temperature changes, um, the solubility on the y-axis goes up or down. Any point on the line then represents a saturated solution. Any points under the line or under the curve would represent or indicate an unsaturated solution, something less than that maximum line. The solubility curve, that maximum amount, is a very specific amount for the substance at a given temperature. Only one amount would give you a saturated solution. Anything less, by a gram or by 50 grams or more, would give you an unsaturated solution. Anything above the line, and there are lots of points above each of these curves as well, would represent a supersaturated solution for that solute at that temperature. And so as we look at the curves here, consider the fact that on this page there are, as I said, you know, 10 or 12 of them. Each of them represents a different solute, and then the temperatures and the solubility for that uh, relationship for that solute alone. So as we're looking at this page, often the challenge is, is simply to figure out, make sure I'm looking at the right curve and then I'm not uh, switching and I'm looking at the wrong line as I move across the page. So a couple of practice problems to kind of work with for, the, for you on that and kind of show you how, how they work. Uh, to read the solubility curve, you'll notice again the two axes. On the y-axis you have solubility, hence the name solubility curve, and this is the dependent variable. And on the bottom then your temperature is your independent variable. So look, at, look in there, look there at, at the solubility curve in front of you and how those two are related. Um, in lab, we'll be doing a, uh, a relationship or recreating one of these curves, the relationship for one of the solutes on the screen here, and uh, trying to see if our solubility curve, experimental curve, looks like this, the literature curve uh, that's on the screen and on the sheet that you'll get to work from as well. What I've done here is highlighted one of the solubility curves. In this example, I've highlighted the curve for uh, ammonium chloride. And we're going to look first at question number one on your practice page. So problem number one asks, do you determine the solution's saturation if you have 50 grams of ammonium chloride dissolved at 50 degrees Celsius? And again, on each of these questions, you should assume that we're talking about 100 grams of water unless something else is mentioned. And the reason for that is this solubility curve these lines are, are drawn based on the idea that we're using 100 grams of water. Any more than that, and this curve can't be used directly. Or any, any less than that, and we can't use it directly either. So we're assuming that we're using 100 grams of water, as the instructions on that sheet say as well. So to answer this question, uh, to determine the solution saturation, you're simply being asked, is it a saturated solution, is it an unsaturated solution, or is it a supersaturated solution at that temperature? with that amount. So to do that, find then on the uh, graph 50 degrees Celsius on your x-axis and then 50 grams of solute on the y-axis. And put your pencil point right about at where 50 degrees Celsius and 50 grams would meet. The green arrow here is pointing to that spot on this particular uh, example or on this question. And then since this question is asking about ammonium chloride, you'll want to find the solubility curve for that solute. 
And again, I've made it red here on the screen so that you can see it a bit easier. Otherwise, you'd have to look at your sheet and make sure you're following along and looking at the curve for NH4CL. And then it's a simple question of, is, is the arrow pointing to or is your pencil point um, above, below, or on the solubility curve? As we look at this example, you can see the green arrow is pointing to the place where 50 and 50, 50 degrees and 50 grams meet, and it's right on the curve for ammonium chloride. So that would represent a saturated solution because the line itself, again, represents a saturated solution at, at, an, at any temperature along that line. You can tell that for ammonium chloride that as the temperature goes up, it takes more and more of that solute to stay saturated to stay on the line and as you cool the water it takes less and less. Way over here on the end of that curve if water was nearly freezing cold you could only dissolve about 28 grams but at 50 degrees Celsius you can dissolve 50 grams quite a bit more and it keeps going off the page from there. Another example problem is number 15 a little further down the sheet. It asks you there to prepare a saturated solution how much would you need? And then specifically on question 15, it's asking to prepare a saturated solution of sulfur dioxide, which is a gas, at 20 degrees Celsius, how much SO2 would you need to dissolve? Well, notice on this curve that gases are shown as dashed lines, um, just to kind of make them a little bit visibly distinct. So at sulfur dioxide here is the curved line that's near the bottom of your solubility chart. And to answer question 15, to make a saturated solution, we go over to 20 degrees Celsius, which is the temperature that it mentions. And so f go over to 20 degrees Celsius on your x-axis and then go up, straight up, until you hit the curve for sulfur dioxide, which is kind of curving right through here, right? So go up at 20 degrees Celsius till you bump into that curve and then read straight across to your y-axis on this side. Somewhere just above 10 uh, is where that meets uh, the curve. And so we would say that approximately, maybe you read that as about 11 or 12 uh, grams of SO2 would be needed at 20 degrees Celsius to make a saturated solution. So for saturation, again, remember, that, that's the line itself. The line represents a saturated solution. So to, to make a saturated solution, that's how much you'd need to dissolve at 20 degrees, about 11 or 12 grams. And so for any of these, you would go to the temperature that the question asks on that second set of questions go to the temperature, go up until you bump into the curve for the solute in question, and in this example it was SO2, and then go straight across to the left until you come across the y-axis and read that uh, amount off the y-axis. So those solubilities are in grams and the temperatures on this particular example I was in Celsius. Notice the temperatures on here range from 0 to 100 degrees Celsius, and we're talking about water as our solvent, so since water would exist as a liquid between 0 and 100 degrees Celsius, it makes sense that that would be the temperature range that we'd actually consider for, for water. Anything colder than that, you'd be trying to dissolve something into ice, which doesn't work very well, uh, or anything above 100 Celsius, and you'd be trying to, to dissolve it into steam, which doesn't work either. So we keep water between 0 and 100 degrees when we want to use it as a solvent, and it'll exist as a liquid and let us do that. One other kind of question on here is question number 11. It asks what kind of solution, again saturated, unsaturated, or supersaturated, would exist or would contain rather 80 grams of KCl in 175 grams of water. Notice on questions 11 and 12 you're given a quantity of water that is not 100 degrees, or I'm sorry, 100 grams of water. So we can't use the solubility curve immediately as it is. We have to adjust this quantity to use the solubility curve to answer the question. Since the amount of water given in this question is not 100 grams, it's 175, we first have to use a ratio to adjust it to get to 100 grams. In other words, sure, this question is using 175 grams of water. How much KCl would that be equivalent if we shrunk that down from 175 to 100. So we set up a ratio that looks kind of like this. You're given in this question 80 grams of KCl dissolved in or per 175 grams of water. So I set up a ratio there, 80 grams of KCl over 175 grams of water. And I set that equal to, if I were to use 100 grams of water, how much KCl would that be? So we're more or less shrinking this recipe down from 175 grams of water down to 100 grams of water and how much KCl would it take to keep the concentration the same. 
and you can solve for x here by cross multiplying and dividing and x comes out to be right around 46 grams 45.7 or about 46 grams of KCl. That's the amount of KCl that it would take to have the same concentration or the same strength of solution in only 100 grams of water instead of 175. Now you can go to the solubility curve as the question asks okay, and uh, figure out at 60 degrees Celsius what kind of uh, solution you would have. So you'd go now to 60 degrees Celsius and at 46 grams of KCl and read off your solubility curve the type of solution that it would be. I'll let you answer number 11 and we'll take a look at it in class after you've had a chance to consider that. So again go to 60 degrees Celsius go up to 46 grams and then find the curve for KCl. Are you on the curve, below the curve, or above the curve? And then what type of solution do you have? Remember on the curve is a saturated solution Below the curve is an unsaturated solution, and anytime you're above the curve, it's a supersaturated solution. We'll go through a few more examples uh, in class and take, take some time to let you work and ask some questions on some of the trickier ones. But in the meantime, start working on especially those first two sections. Questions 1 through 10 are very straightforward. You don't need to do any ratios or anything. Uh, just look up the temperature and the grams of solute, and then make sure you're looking at the right curve. Uh, so that we know we're talking about the right solute. And are you on, above, or below the curve? And then on 11 through 15, it's simply a matter of going to the temperature that's asked for, uh, in the question, going up until you bump into that solute's curve, and then going across to the left and reading off the mass of solute at that temperature, where that goes up and across to the solute, solute curve that you're, you're asked for in the question, as we went through here in number uh, 15. So we'll talk about more of those in class. In the meantime, uh, give a few a try. And the questions that come afterwards in the bottom section of the, of the sheet are fairly straightforward too. But again, we'll have some work time in class to take some questions on those too. Good luck.